I'm going crazy sitting on that train And I don't think I'm ever coming home Don't think I'm lazy Don't think I'm strange I do think I'm really just losing it all Cause I'm going crazy Yes, I'm going crazy all right, shameless plugs. What do I do? Well, I've got a radio show, My FM, on My FM 101.3 in Milford. That's me right there, and that's the studio. And I'm on from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. every morning. Please listen in. It's a lot of fun, or I think it is. I entertain myself. Um, I also do a podcast with Jeff Belanger, and it's called New England Legends Podcast. We have a few uh, legendary listeners watching right now. Hi, legendary listeners. We take about 10 or 15 minutes of your time. And we tell you some fun stories about New England legends. We've been doing it for almost four years. We haven't missed a week. Not a week. Isn't that crazy? Jeff's an amazing writer. Uh, let's see. How about some of my business friends out there? Dr. Roof. Check your roof. Have you looked at your roof lately? They cover your assets. I love that. Give Dr. Roof a call. And um, I mean, they come by, they do the free estimates and all that fun stuff. And, uh, you know, before it's too late, they also do siding and, and uh, gutters and all that. TC Scoops, delicious ice cream over there. And they've got the Scoop Dogs. That's in Medway. And the TC Libations. There is a sample right there. I had some fireball out last week when I was talking to Ryan Maloney from Julio's Liquors. We laughed about fireball, but it serves a purpose as it does right here. Fireball. Rum, what is that? Rum something and uh, Graham Central Station ice cream. And she mixes it all up for you over there at TC Scoops. You can also do takeout. You can do takeout with the alcohol if you get some ice cream. Oh, I had some Poke Moto today. I got some Poke Moto. This is a new place in Franklin, in the Franklin Village Plaza. Um, Hawaiian Poke. I've never had it before. It's absolutely delicious. Look at that. Oh, I got the shrimp bowl. And Molly got something. I think she got the salmon. It's got rice and then all the toppings on it. Look at how excited I am eating it. Oh, so good. It was big. I only ate half of it. So Poke, Poke Moto in, uh, in Franklin. Check out that place. They do the DoorDash and Grubhub as well. A little bit later on, Matt Zajac's going to join me. That's his new CD, Garden of Heden. That's New Mexico-ish, I think. I think that was New Mexico. That was from my cross-country trip. We listened to uh, the CD a couple times. My name's in the CD. How cool is that? Uh, and there he is. It just popped up down in the queue. Um, and then we're going to talk to talk to uh, Bob Vozella a little bit later on from La Cantina Winery. I stopped by earlier and got a bottle of wine so that I could enjoy it while I'm talking to Bob. What other pictures do I have on here? I don't think my guests are showing up and that's just horrible. Hey, Sunday nights, chicken chat, rubber chicken comic comics presents at chicken chat. And you can find that, uh, that podcast. What, what do you call it? It's a video vid, vlog? Maybe. I don't know. You can find that on the rubber chicken comics, Facebook page and the amped up promotions page as well. So there's some shameless plugs for you. Oh, 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 next week. Did I put this up? Oh, yeah, yeah. Next week, if he uh, if he calls in, I'm going to talk to Ron Thomas, who plays Bobby in The Karate Kid and Cobra Kai. Very important role, too. He's um, Pastor Bobby in, uh, in Cobra Kai, and he's got a lot of lessons for the gang. Um, but I'm going to talk to him. He's a motivational speaker. That's what he does for real. So Ron Thomas will be on the show next week. And I'm waiting for the Nelms brothers to chime in. Maybe I should email them. I don't know. Let's check uh, the comments. Fat man. I know, man. I know. I know, Tim. And we're all awaiting their call. Um, let's see. Raylene, what are you up to? Using the podcast in my classroom this week. Kids are loving loving it. And grade eight is hard. to. Oh, you're using the, the New England Legends. Well, thank you so much. That's awesome. Uh, speaking of the food we had tonight, there's Molly. Get the dull whip, whip. And it, it was yummy, Joy. They have a few in Mass. They have a few in Connecticut. I don't think it's it's a big 
uh, franchise, but oh, rum chata. What's rum? Is that an alcohol or is that some kind of a food or is it a non-alcoholic flavoring? I don't know. Not saying anything. I feel like uh, Kurt Schilling. Have you seen Kurt, Kurt Schilling's little video thing? I was watching it last week. He, it looked like he was just building something. He had a bunch of models behind him and he just kept, then every once in a while he'd look up. Hey, Dave. Yeah, sign of the times. That was that was the whole show. I had no idea what he was doing. No guess, nothing. Uh, Joy, what did you open? You opened a red Moscato tonight, Western Massachusetts, Conway near Yankee Candle. How fancy! Are you drinking wine while you are enjoying the scent of a Yankee Candle? Because that's a dream of mine. I don't. I do have a Yankee Candle here. I have bacon, but I didn't think it would go with my Merlot. Does bacon Merlot go with bacon? I bet you it would. I'm going to ask Bob that later on. But there's my La Cantina Merlot. All right. Looks like uh, those guys aren't going to uh, chime in, which is really, you know what? I'm going to email them just in case while you're uh, watching. This is, I mean, if you're a fan of my morning show, then I'm right on par here. This is so uh, professional. But that's not what Friday nights are for. There we go. All right. I just got to. Uh, let's see. Right, how should I put this? Hey, guys. What the F? Is that a friendly way to start? <laughs> Are you checking in? Are you logging in soon? I'll say that. Logging in soon. Sorry, guys. That's, that's to you guys. I really wanted this to go seamless. But you know what? That's what happens with celebrities. Uh, back to I got uh, uh, Jay. Well, let's bring Jay in for a minute. Hey, Jay. Oh, he's not even there. Let's see what Jay's doing. Everyone be quiet. If you can hear him in the background. That's creepy. Let's look at Jay's room. Just the room. I feel like something really serious could happen here. I should probably shut it off, right? Here we go. Just in case he says something. Um, all right, you want to see the trailer for the movie I've been uh, bragging about for so long? I got to bring this up. There we go. All right, check this out. These uh, I was going to talk to the uh, the creators of this movie, the writers and directors, the Nelms brothers. Check it out. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I've lost my influence. Maybe it's time I retired the coat. You still have it. Some kids with a deer rifle put two holes in the sleigh, one in me. All I have is a loathing for a world that's forgotten. <laughs> the United States military would like to procure your services. This is a one-time deal, gentlemen. How are you, Mike? Nicole and the kids are well, I hope. Where are you? You just rushed a big gun! What's the job? I'd like you to kill Santa Claus. I'm looking for the fat man. You can't be serious. This is what people actually think of me. Christmas is a farce. I am a joke. What's the purpose of your visit? Hunting. I'm going to kill some things. There is a rising number of our youth making poor decisions. What the big man's head? Severed heads rot. They mold. They don't want his beard. I'm not shaving off a dead man's beard. Your workers sure have healthy appetites. That's why elves live much longer than humans. And Chris, he knows the same. <laughs> It's a giving that keeps him young. I've come for your head, fat man! Dashing through the snow No one horse open sir. You think you're the first? Oh, the fields we Think I got this job because I'm fat and jolly? Nothing Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way Oh, 
Lucky it wasn't Blitzer should tear your package clean off. <laughs> it's an amazing movie, and it took me off guard when I first saw it. I'm like, oh, I like Gibson. I'll watch that. That looks interesting. Expected a comedy. You know, there's there's obviously humor in it, um, but it was so much more. And the guys are on hold. But, uh, Joy, look, see, I do have bacon-scented Yankee candles, so... To prepare for my wine later, I'll light this up. I think the uh, Merlot is going to pair well with that. So let's bring in uh, the creators of that movie right there. We've got Ian. What's up, Ian? How are you? Hey, man. How are you? Thanks for having us. Good. And I think we might have your brother here, too. Yep, there he is. There. How, are you? how are you? Thanks for joining me. I loved the movie. I, I was so It was so unexpected. <laughs> And I'm sure you're getting that reaction from everybody. <laughs> oh, thank you, brother. I'm so glad you dug it, man. Um, yeah, hopefully it catches people, you know, a little, uh, catches them sleeping, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, it was one of those late night decisions. It's funny because it was like, oh, I'm not that tired. And, you know, I don't always want to rent movies. It's That can add up. I love movies, but it adds up. But I saw it and I'm like, you know, just the poster alone, Mel Gibson's big head and the 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 furry uh, um you know, covering uh, the, the cap there. And I'm like, ah, got to check it out. And saw it, pleasantly surprised. And no word of a lie, I went on another show the next day and talked about it for about 10 or 15 minutes and had some other people renting it. So uh, wow. we're, we're big fans over here. Well, thank you. You, you are a gentleman, brother. Thank you so much. <laughs> I don't, I don't know about that. I just lit a, I just lit a bacon candle. I don't know how much of a gentleman I am. <laughs> so I heard that this song, I mean, this, uh, this movie was like long in the making 14, 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. It took yeah. So about, about 14 years, uh, from when we had the first sort of comprehensible, complete script, but we had been, you know, kicking around the idea even for a couple of years before that. So it's, it's definitely a marathon. Talk about the uh, the concept to what we saw. Was it was it exactly what you thought it was going to be once it was produced and put out there from the start? I mean, I guess there's a lot of different pieces that happen, right? So I guess when we first when we first thought of the idea, we were trying to figure out how to. I mean, we'd all seen like the sort of Tim Allen, you know, the the uh, the, the 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 sort of family friendly Santa. We'd seen the the guy who comes down your chimney with a hatchet. Uh, and we were looking for something that was a little more grounded. We were like, oh, can we create something that's, you know, like something like Unbreakable did for superheroes, you know, like a very, very grounded take on this guy. And um, so we just started breaking it down. We started talking about it back in the early 2000s. Um, and I remember the first thing we did was we both wrote a short story. So Esh wrote a short story that sort of resembles, you know, the film as it is today. Just a, a like it was short, you know, like a couple of pages yeah. of the story okay it goes this way there's this kid he hires a hitman and then i wrote a story that was very much a prequel to what to what the film is and what what the world is um and it was all stuff we had discussed and we weren't quite sure how we were going to tell the story and we were like okay well i'll go write a short story you go write a short story and we just happened to end up in different you know times um <laughs> and we came back together and read each other's shorts and we're like oh you know what the one we should probably do is the contemporary one because it's probably more doable you know i mean the prequel had like you know it was like a thousand years ago it was like you know way back when a lot of craziness going on uh so we were like well if we're gonna pull this off <laughs> unlike we'll unlike today well yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> cycle about every 12 every thousand years seemingly right <laughs> right uh, but we but we we decided to write the contemporary version and uh and yeah that's what, you, that's what we ended up shooting today but i mean that that was the cool thing about doing that was that we had a lot of backstory uh, to, to play upon that we got, we, we got to nod to rather than, you know, sort of have to do exposition in our minds because we, we, uh, we had a, we had a backstory and we like creating stories to where it opens it up for you. So where your mind can do a lot more work than, than, than having people just sort of yap about it. But, um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much how it started and our, our approach to it. Well, and you it, have enough material now where you can do the prequel or the sequel perhaps. Right. Oh yeah, we're we're definitely hungry to to, to try maybe both. Um, well, we've been with it for fourteen years. I mean, we've we've. It's like okay, where would we take this? We've definitely had time about where we 
where we would move forward with. Ashram, you were saying? Well, I, I think we, well, you were asking, like, was that an initial inception of the idea the same as what we actually, you know, realized ultimately? And, and for us, we were very blessed in that we had producers and financiers and distributors that all wanted to see the movie that was in our noggins, you know? So we, there were times along the road to getting it produced that we were sort of, hey, you know, take it this way, take it that way. It should be more of a farce. It should be the kid and skinny man on a road trip. You know, like there were some other like, you know, pretty different takes pitched at us as how we could steer the story. But Ian and I honestly only saw it this way. And uh, that's since we conceived the idea and we were fortunate to have collaborators that helped us execute. And that was the as, part. It's like, you get, you get like the actors in front of the camera, the DP, like everybody, everybody that we worked with, thank goodness. Uh, you know, was really excited about, you know, our idea for it and the script that we'd written for it. So, you know, when we're talking to someone like Mel or Walton or Mary Ann or Chance, um, you know, they were very much, you know, in tune, in sync with the, with what we were what we were hoping to, to get out of it. Was Mel Gibson uh, in your thoughts when you first started writing this? Because um, I'm sure you're writing, you've got uh, actors in your mind already. I'm not sure Walton Goggin was a household name. 14, 15 years ago, maybe the shield. That's kind of old, right? Anyway, right. W was Gibson there? He was from the start. He was around, but he was like in his what? Well, in your mind, though, in your mind it, when you were writing this. We when we first wrote it 14 years ago, we had Jack Nicholson and Johnny Depp in mind. That was wow. Kind of ideal casting for, for that time period. But we actually saw him at a at a hacksaw ridge in 2016, 2017. And he was doing, he was on like the awards run for it. So he had this amazing beard and he was sort of slumped over. You know, I remember him talking and I remember his face and I just remember this passion in the eyes. And he was also talking like about how tough it was and what he had done in the movie and, how, you know, how he got those great shots and the actors and they weren't actors, but he was working with them. And it was, it was a great Q and A, but I just remember the way that he was talking about it. You felt the sort of weight of the world on his shoulders <laughs> You also saw the passion in his eyes. And I remember Reshman and I looking at each other saying, man, that's the guy. That's that's the character right there. Um, and from there, we, we were pretty hell bent on getting him. And uh, I remember we, we went to his two years later, you know, when we finally got an opportunity to make the film, we went to his agent. Um, and then, you know, we didn't hear back for two or three weeks. And we're like, oh, man, are we, you know, are we going to have to go, you know, go to the next person on the list. And then because he was he was our number one. Um, and then. Then I got this email and I'd been fielding a bunch of emails from financiers that were like, hey, you know, uh, we want to talk to you about it. Come on in. We enjoyed the script. And I got one that said that didn't have a sign off that was just like, hey, you know, I enjoyed the script. thought it was funny. Let's sit down for a chin wag. And uh, first we were like, what's a chin wag? And then I said, oh, yeah, awesome. Great. You know, thinking it's another financier. Uh, let's 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 talk. And I was like, but who am I speaking with? And he wrote, oh, sorry, sometimes I forget to sign off. This is Mel, you know, and it, <laughs> went, it, it was amazing. I think Eshman and I hugged. Uh, we were pumped. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and from there, they said, okay, you got a 45-minute meeting with Mel. You guys can sit down and talk about it, see if you gel on this project. And, yeah, three and a half hours later, we emerged from the from the cafe, um, you know, like and just had a great conversation about, you know, everything, life, films, his films, this film. Um, and I really remember the one moment that that stands out is when he was talking about the elves. He was like, oh, that moment where I come out on the balcony and I'm addressing these elves. And he's like, I just feel like that moment is just going to be devastating and I should be just about ready to cry. And we're all, yeah, yeah, exactly. He's like, and I think that's what's going to make it so funny. And we're like, exactly. Like, he got the grounded, you know, very grounded approach and that that we wanted to find the humor sort of organically throughout the film rather than going for jokes, you know? Well, I, I mean, real life has humor, you know, yeah. in it already. You know, you don't need to tell the jokes. Life is humor. Uh, so, and, so to see Santa Claus walking around, I got to go to work, and you don't see him flying in the sleigh, but, you know, you assume that's what he's doing. But everything was so realistic. And it's got to be tough to come up with a fresh new uh, take on Santa and Christmas. And you guys, you guys did that. Thank you. I mean, we really, we really just had a blast doing it, though. And it, so, you know, like it, it was, you know, was it tough? I don't know. We just had a blast thinking of all the different nuances of his world and, oh, like just problem solving, you know, like, oh, well, where would he be? Well, 
you know, we're, we're Americans. We know America pretty well. So we're like, oh, well, you know what? Like, it seems like let's set him in America. And he would need some sort of infrastructure to get letters to him. So they're like, we could just kind of hear the pitch from the U.S. government, right? Like, you can use the post office. We'll set you up in North Peak, Alaska. It's great. We'll get you off the grid. You can use our distribution, our supply chain. So we're like, oh, this could be pretty enticing for him, you know, although it's kind of a, it's also very, very mutually beneficial for them. You know, so it sure. was just fun to come up with all these worlds. And then like, even the stuff were like, well, you know, if he's, if he's all knowing, like, how does that work? Right. Because if he has, right. you know, 380 a million voices from America alone, just coming into his head, like he's going to be schizophrenic. So we're like, well, it's like a proximity thing. Or like, he kind of has to almost like a, you know, like a, like look you up or, you know, have a name before the association comes to him. Um, right. Things like yeah. that, you know? That was very cool. And uh, you're, you're making a tradition for, for many people already. Great movie. It's now in the holiday movie rotation from here forth. Uh, Tim says, my absolute favorite holiday uh, adult holiday movie. And you had a ah. few to, uh, to get past. And uh, it's right up there for me as well. It'll be a tradition every year. Now, Walton Goggins seems like the kind of guy that might be tough to get. He doesn't take a ton of roles. And I was very surprised that he did that, you know, that sitcom, uh, The Unicorn, which is a great show. But how, how was getting him? That must have been difficult. It's crazy because it, it's funny because you, I mean, you just never know what someone's going to be interested in, honestly, because I remember when, when uh, like Walden was not like sort of in our peripheral at the time for some reason. And when, and as soon as like our agency, we, we share a, the same agency. And as soon as they said, Hey, well, what do you think about Walden Goggins? Cause we'd taken about a dozen, a dozen meetings with about a dozen, you know, wonderful actors that would have done something very cool and all their own with it. Um, and we were trying to decide, all right, like who, you know, who do you think would be the best for this? And then I, I remember our, our agent said, well, hey, have you ever thought about Walton Goggins for this part? And we went, oh, my God, like, why have we not thought of that? Like, that's a great idea. And they said, well, hey, let's let us get him the script and see if he enjoys it. He read it. He liked it. He said, let's sit down. And I just remember we went to this coffee shop and he was like so pumped. He was so awesome. He walks in, he sits down. We're talking for like five or ten minutes. We get into the script and he's like, you know, within like five or 10 minutes he's just up on his feet like he's like i got this elf and i'm right in front of me and i'm like hey man, what the fuck you know like, <laughs> he was so intense and like in the moment we were just like oh my god this is the guy yeah. like and this, yeah, this was not an, imp an empty cafe. Like there were people like <laughs> rubbernecking like what the heck you know it was it was great Ian and i were just like yep he's the dude he's so perfect yeah. one of and as a they can let everything melt away around him you know even yeah that and just get right into what he needs to do uh, but it was wonderful to work with he was just all in all the time i mean they all were and they all had their own particular ways of working but they were all a lot of fun to work with and and they all just brought a lot to the table that's awesome well, as a fan you want to hear that you want to hear that everybody had a good time and they these people that you know you're watching every day and you look up to and um there's nothing worse than meeting somebody in the industry that's horrible Right. No, it's, it's true. I mean, we've had a couple of those meetings once in, you know, you know, in our, in our, in our tenure in Hollywood, but I mean, thank goodness. I mean, for the, for, for just about everybody we've ever worked with, you know what I mean? Um, you get the, you get to have that meeting with that person and see if you're you know going to strangle each other on set or if you're going to it's gonna be love fest. And thankfully, you know, everybody that we've worked with, I mean, that's kind of, it's kind of that choosing process, right? You sit down with them, you talk to them and you're like, yeah, man, this guy's going to be great. Or this woman's going to be amazing. Or you, know, you have that vibe and hopefully you gel, you know? Asham, was there a Christmas movie or story or a version of Santa that you use for inspiration on this? I don't know if, we, if there's a direct reference, but I think like Ian and I really like off center Christmas films, like uh, rare exports and gremlins and stuff like that. So I think that's sort of our, like where we like to go as far as our holiday viewing. Uh, yeah. So I, it, feel, I felt like there was no way we could, we had to make something that was going to be outside the box of what, what had been done before. Yeah. yeah. Talking about it, like people have asked us before, like, what is the, what, what was the, what's the correlation? Like what films would you say, you know, sort of led you in this direction or what was your inspiration for it? And as far as like films, we, when we, when we sit down and think about it, it's like, it's like it was like unbreakable is certainly in that camp you know and then we were like like the good the bad the ugly is certainly in that camp you know it's kind of a three-hander and these characters are swirling and then they sort of smash into each other mm. uh unforgiven was probably in our mind wow our favorite films it's just kind of in our blood dirty harry for sure those characters are 
Well, he yeah. became Dirty Harry at the end. I love it. I don't want to give too much away. Because I got a lot of people that want to watch this, but it would I could see it. I'm like, oh my God, he's channeling Clint Eastwood right yeah. there. Well, there's, <laughs> there's there's a lot, right? There's a little bit of John Wayne in there. There's a little yeah, bit yeah. of everything in there. You know, I remember when Nell sat down, that was another thing he said to us. He's like, I gotta see this guy as an old cowboy. And for us, like Ian and I are from the Central Valley. There's a lot of ranchers, there's a lot of cowboys. And so we're like, oh, you know what? Like that was sort of the, a, a type that we pulled out. We're like, what if one of these, you know, local ranchers here in the valley were Santa Claus? And that was sort of an archetype that we sort of ran off with. And and it, it's, it's very much for us a contemporary Westernish vibe, you know? It's yeah, got the it, thriller even, elements in it. Right. Yeah. Even though it's a thriller or Western, all that stuff, there's still the spirit of, of Christmas to be found in that movie. You know yeah. what I mean? Deep, deep down inside, it's, it's still your traditional Christmas movie that – you know, once you're of age, everyone should enjoy. Right. Well, it's funny because I mean, uh, that's absolutely something that we were trying to preserve because at the very, at the end of the day, like you, you know, Santa's moral compass or his ethical compass or his, his benevolence is all aimed in the right direction. You know, even though he sort of has to, has to sort of, uh, you know, get down and dirty at the end. Uh, we definitely wanted, because we, we were trying to, we were trying to extrapolate like where those myths came from. Right. And that kind of goes from across the, the board it's like oh you see this and, and at times we're sort of sort of trying to flip that on its head and at times we're also trying to say well why why were the elves portrayed in the coca-cola commercial as little green people oh they have a, a slight green shade and their ears are slightly pointed but they're not like farcically martian green you know right yeah, yeah. they're not lou frignu you know what i'm saying and hulk <laughs> <laughs> Great throwback. All right. I want to see if you guys have a sense of humor and I want to bring up a name. Uh oh. <laughs> um, NBC film critic, Sa uh, critic Sam Thelman. Ring a bell? The name does not ring a bell. But... Oh, it's so I, you know, I, I watch a movie and then I go check out the, uh, the reviews. I don't, I'm not oh, a there's... review guy at all, but I still do. This yeah. was one of the worst reviews. And by the way, <laughs> not a, I couldn't find many bad reviews. This guy, this guy said, th this is a movie made by people who've never seen a movie before. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to find this article because it is so absurd and it's become a joke within my, my circle of friends who really enjoy uh, movies. Um, and it was actually, I mean, at the end of the day, it was written by somebody who has never seen a movie before. He was upset that Walton's character, the skinny man, had, uh, had the, the matchbox car from his youth. And why was he preserving that? Why was that there? And on the bottom, it said made in the North pole. Why was it sitting there? Well, there was an easy answer. If you watch the movie, he's obsessed with how treat, uh, Santa treated him as a child. Yeah. And he had his own <laughs> vendetta against Santa Claus. It wasn't that difficult, but um, find that review. You'll like it. That sounds like a there, there's some great ones out there, man. Honestly, Ian and I, uh, we get some, we get some good kicks out of them. <laughs> good. <laughs> As long as, as long as you have a sense of humor about it. It's funny. I think when you, I mean, we've certainly read, you know, we, 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 we've definitely read the good, the bad and the ugly reviews and uh, <laughs> fun. To, it's fun. It's, it's some of them are fun to, to read because, you know, sometimes they are constructive and sometimes uh, it is cool to be like, Oh, that's an interesting spin on it. But yeah, some of them are just crazed. And you this one was absurd. It was just, you can't that's why I brought it up. So off the charts. Right. You, you can't do much about that. And like, you know, we've made a, a few films in our day. And the thing that we've always learned is that you just, you got to lean into the positive because that's who you made the film for. Like that's that, right. that poor bastard. I just can't, I can't, <laughs> him. I, I didn't make the movie he wanted. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I mean, that's why I don't understand critics. Not everybody likes everything and art is subjective and just don't watch it. If, you, if you're not interested in it, but I, for one, loved it. Thank you for putting that out there in the universe. Hope to see a prequel. Hope to see a sequel. Thanks, man. What, yeah, maybe. We're, oh, well, we've, like I said, we, we had an idea for a prequel. I mean, we're talking right now with our uh, distributor slash producers about, uh, about a sequel. Uh, Mel's down, you know, Marianne's down. Um, our, our, basically our, our, our cast that would come back is down and excited to do another one. We're excited to do another one. It's just now it's like logistics, you know, it's like, okay, when is Mel available? When are we available? Yeah. You know, like, is it when is everybody available and can we work out everybody's deal and timing? You know, it's like it's so yeah. I hopefully hopefully I mean, all fingers crossed, man. It, it looks positive and it looks like we're all moving in the right direction. So good. We could see it. Maybe us, like the equivalent would be if the first one was Mad Max, the sequel will be our road warrior. Oh, yeah. there you go. I like that. Pump, and then maybe, maybe a spinoff, maybe a spinoff with Walton in the skin. Oh, well, it'd have to be a prequel. <laughs> but right, well, possible. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, thank you so much. 
Esham and Ian Nelms. And we, we didn't even get to half the stuff you guys are doing and what you have done. So uh, maybe maybe another time. But I, I would highly suggest everybody watch that movie. It's still on demand. Um, yeah. It's well worth you know. It's well worth buying it at 1999 to tell you the truth because you'll watch it every year. Um, and then look these guys up online and, and follow them. Uh, thanks for the entertainment. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming on the show, guys. Thank you, Thank Ray. You, Ray. Appreciate it, brother. Right, take care. Bye-bye. All right. Well, that was awesome. Um, seriously, uh, we, there's a little circle of us that always talk about that uh, that movie, and it will be a, a yearly watch for me. Home Alone, Christmas Vacation, Bad Santa, and and now Fat Man. All right, let's go to Franklin. It is a Franklin show. I was going to ask those guys if they had any connections with Franklin, Massachusetts. Probably not. Matt Zajac is uh, coming up in just a little bit to play a song from his album, maybe, his new album, or a brand new song. We'll have to find out uh, in just a little bit. But let's bring up my next guest, Bob Vizella from uh, La Cantina Winery in Franklin. Bob, how are you, man? Cheers, man. How you doing? Cheers. I have a, uh, a beer. I'm going to finish this. But I stopped by yeah. earlier and got a chance to see you, and I got my Merlot here, and I popped the top just to um, let it breathe. That's a thing, right? Oh, you froze on me, Bob. Uh, there you are. All right. There you are. You're there. Yeah, you got me? Yeah, I got you. Um, right. I let this breathe. How long should I let a bottle of wine breathe? Oh, you know, I mean, if, if we're talking a red, you know, you probably want to open it maybe 20 minutes before you want to drink it. Which is what I if did. Yeah, there you go. If you're in a rush, I mean, just let's open it and, and you know, have a flip, right? That's okay, too, right? You 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 don't uh, joke around. I mean, you, you guys do the corks and everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we make it all happen right here in Franklin. As I finish my uh, my beer, why don't you tell us about La Cantina Winery, um, when you guys opened, um, and the, the whole concept. It's it, We see a few wineries here and there in, in on the East Coast, and massachusetts and in our area but you know they're they're more well known in the west coast obviously so what brought wine to franklin sure sure so um well really you know part of a family tradition uh, my my family came from italy um they made wine they had a big garden and uh you know i figured you know we carry on that family tradition of making wine I'm, i don't have such a green thumb so i leave that up to some other family members but uh you know wine certainly pleases everybody um, you know, we, we source grapes from, uh, from Napa Valley, from Chile, from Argentina. Wow. Grapes are all hand picked. They get delivered right to us. And, um, you know, we, we turn grapes to glass essentially. How long does that take? What's, what's the process there? Once you get the grapes, how long till it goes in the glass? Yeah. So if we're, if we're talking a red wine, um, it can be anywhere between 12 to 24 months between, before it actually gets into, uh, into a glass. Well, I think you froze on me again. Nope. And well, you want, Oh, there you go. I think you're back. All right. Let me also see if I can't do a hotspot, but, uh, that's technology, right? It works when you want it to. I had a hard time getting my camera to work, uh, earlier in the show. So I bought it. I bought a camera and there's a million of them online, by the way, if you're looking for a, a uh, you know external camera and none of them work. It's gonna. It's the second one I have to send back. That's what we were just talking about. We need a um, because we're we're gonna be doing Zoom tasting. So, you know, we're gonna try to, you know, we're thinking outside the box, getting people engaged, and um, yep, we're gonna Zoom tasting coming up on uh, January 29th. And where would people go to sign up for that? So they go to our website. Uh, we get a link there. We're shipping to actually 40 states. People can also come by and do a curbside pickup or come into the store when we're open. There was and, a nice uh, young lady yeah. there uh, earlier when I was there and she was signing up for the, for the zoom. So she came in, she bought the wine, took it home and then she'll go on the zoom and you guys will drink the wine she purchased. Right. Yeah. 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 We'll have a fun event. You know, uh, we'll have some cheese, some crackers, some different meats and uh, you know, we'll pound down a few bottles of wine. I love it. All right. So I, I just want to go through the process with you. I do love sure. wine. And there was a time a couple of years ago where I drank that. That's all I drank. I don't know anything about wine. I just know that I like the taste of it. So I pop my bottle. It's been sitting for about 20 minutes. So it's it's uh, breathing, I suppose. Right. Now, is there, I'm getting very pretentious here. And I know it doesn't have to be this way. 
how would I pour this? Am I am I tipping the glass? Does it matter how it goes in? No. Yeah, so basically, you know, you want to kind of set the glass on a flat surface. You want okay. to pour about an ounce. An ounce. All right. Yeah. I don't know if that's an ounce. I'm horrible with uh, okay. yeah, yeah, measurement. No, it's good. Okay. So, you know, what you first want to do is you want to smell. Get your nose right in there, you right? Yeah, get your nose right in there, right? All right, and then kind of think about what those flavors remind you of. I mean, you know, I could sit here and tell you they smell like chocolate or, or coconut or vanilla, but, you know, it's, it's all up to you. And then what well, you want to do is you want to swirl. Okay. After that first smell. And what am I looking for? Right. Now we're, what we're doing is we're letting the wine open. Okay. All right. So after that, then you want to give it a second smell. You smell different things than you did the first time? I do. Yeah, yeah. I bet you did. Right. I mean, you I, know, I, so maybe I some, some berry. strong berries. Yep. Maybe a little vanilla with that Merlot, possibly. Some chocolate, as you mentioned. Right. Yeah. Right. And then when now you can take a sip, certainly. Oh, Cheers. you already did that. <laughs> Cheers. All right. I'm going to fill this up a little bit more. That was fantastic. How many, uh, how many wines do you have on the menu right now? Uh, we get about 17 different wines. Um, you know, our focus is many different varietals in smaller batches. Um, so it, it allows us to do a lot of different types of wines. Um, anything from a Cabernet, obviously, to a Merlot, a Malbec from Argentina. And then we got some uh, proprietary blends that we do here. Uh, including some whites, you know. So, my my trivia question to to all my guests is, what's your favorite wine? You know, what's the most popular wine in the world? You know, okay. People like, geez, I don't know. Maybe it's a Cabernet. Maybe it's a Chardonnay. The the answer is the one you like, right? So you could like a sweet white. Hey, great. That's the best wine for you. You could like a heavy bold red. That's the best wine for you. So. You know, um, one day in the tasting room, it was great. I had a bunch of uh, Harley Club riders pull in, right? These big burly guys, and they get off their bikes with their wives and girlfriends. They all come in the tasting room, and all the women wanted the heaviest Cabernet I had. All the guys getting off the bikes, they wanted all the sweetest white I had. So <laughs> it all depends on your preference, right? Whatever you love, man. Well, actually, Joy asked that question right here. Bob, what is the sweet? What is a sweeter wine that you have? Oh, cool. Thanks, Joy. Great question. So I'll pull this one out here. I got my Riesling. So I don't know if you can kind of get a picture on that, but um, the Riesling is similar to a Moscato uh, from, you know, very popular in Germany. They do uh, a lot of dry Rieslings. My Riesling here is sweet. Um, it's all natural from the grape. So no sugar added, and it basically, um, you know, it's a little bit lower in alcohol. But I tell people it's dangerous. Be careful. Why? Because it goes down so easy. Like you'll drink a bottle and be like, I didn't even realize it, but uh, but it goes Sneaks down. Sneaks up nice. on you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dave's watching. Hey, Dave. Dave Pence. I'm sure hey, Dave's been doing? there plenty of times. And hi, Dave. Yeah, Dave is great, man. You guys really support wait. local local music, don't you? Absolutely, we do. I mean, you know. My wife, uh, Honor, and I did not get in this business to try to make and sell bottles of wine, right? Because if you want to do that, there are 50 liquor stores in Franklin have had it and support those folks. You know, Franklin Liquors and all those guys, they're great people. But, uh, you know, we're trying to do something different here is basically be a part, right? And support the local musicians, support our local restaurants. Um, you know, I mean, this fall we had the... Uh, we had the girls' soccer team had their banquets here in the back patio. Um, you know, I mean, for us, really, that's the name of the game. Yeah. Right. You know, we support each other, man. We're only going to be stronger. Uh, wh so what are the rules right now with the pandemic? What are you able to do as far as capacity? I know music is off the table right now, but wh what can you do right now? Yeah. So, you know, the rule across the table is 25%. Um, you know, we have a pretty small tasting room. and it's not worth it to open the tasting room to let people feel safe throughout yep. the entire yep. summer and fall. Our goal has been, Hey, you know what? 
come outside, enjoy the patio, have a couple bottles of wine, spend the day. There weren't any reservations. There was no rush on your stay. And just enjoy yourself. I mean, the last thing you want to do is go to a place and feel like, oh, shit, I got a 90-minute stay. I got to hurry up and drink my bottle. We weren't doing that. So, you know what? We figured it was best for us to say, we're going to open when the time is right for the guests. So what we're doing now is we're doing uh, curbside pickup, you know, through our online portal. We're doing uh, local delivery and uh, we'll ship to 40 states, you know, All right. and we, like, I, like we mentioned before, we get a, you know, virtual tasting coming up in January. We'll do another one in February. Is that like a class? My lovely wife is asking if you uh, offer classes. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, we're going to taste wine. We'll talk through the wines. Um, okay. But, you know, what, what we don't like to do is be over prestigious and, you know, pretentious and say, oh, you know, do you smell this? Do you taste that? <laughs> it, it's all right. It's all on what you feel. That's the way we do tastings. Um, we do offer classes in May and in October when the um, you make wine with us. You crush the oh, grapes. Nice. Yeah, you press the grapes. Um, this past fall, we had a pretty good crew, you know, socially distant. We were all COVID friendly. It was all great. And um, I bought a bunch of grapes and I put them in a big oak barrel. And uh, I had folks, men, women, and children jumping in on bare feet, you know, crushing <laughs> grapes. Pretty cool. I think that takes us yeah. back to the old uh, Lucy show. I love Lucy with her. I mean, you must have somebody in each group imitate the two of them. Oh, yeah, Every for sure. <laughs> most, most, they loved it. It was good. Good. How far west do you get? Joy's asking if uh, you do sell any places in Western Mass. I know you, you, you'll you send it. You'll, um, you know, get it out there in the mail. But are you in any stores out that way? So currently we're not. Um, you know, our main focus really lately has been just kind of come see us, right? We have a good story to tell and we want to meet you. So we're really not distributing as of yet, but, um, you know, for the future, that's what our plan is. All right, Bob, thank you so much. It was great awesome. uh, talking to you today earlier. Thank you for the bottle, by the way. I love Merlot, yeah. even in sideways. The biggest line is I am not drinking fucking Merlot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love it. <laughs> Cheers, brother. All right. Cheers. Salute. All right. Take care. I'll see you soon. Turn me on, right? All right, bye-bye. Thanks. That's Bob from La Cantina in uh, Franklin. And I had a nice ride through Franklin today. I, I went to 67 Degrees and saw Olivier and got to talk to Bob right there. And then I went to uh, Poke Moto for dinner. Uh, so it's the Franklin Show. And we get to listen to music from a, uh, a Franklin guy. And let's bring him in right now. It is... Matt Sajak, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, dude? Hey, man. How's it going? I'm okay. How are you? Hey, good. Good to see you, Ray. You didn't think I was going to be able to see you? You had to lean in. <laughs> hey, what's happening? How are you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what's new, Mr. Zajac? Uh, Not much. Well, you mentioned earlier I put out a new record. So, you know, that did that a couple months ago, um, end of October. Yeah, there it is. And I've got this. That was somewhere, that was somewhere in New Mexico. That was when you were on that trip with uh, with Brady. Yeah, we went across the country, and that was yeah, that was somewhere in New Mexico. That's cool. It was an awesome cool. album. I loved it. And you know what was weird was that the music almost became the soundtrack going through New Mexico. The oh, scenery, it all seemed to make sense. The songs really played to the to the landscape. And I don't know if that was just me in in the mood I was in at the time, or if maybe you had road trip on your mind as you were writing these songs. But it felt very appropriate to be listening to that album while I was going through New Mexico. I, I calculated that all. I knew you were going to go on that trip before you knew, <laughs> and I yeah. wrote the songs so that you would have that experience. There you go. <laughs> uh, you have the album, right? You you have yeah. an actual album version of this. I'm just going to show that. Yeah. So I got um, some vinyl records of this. Uh, I'm trying to see it on my phone. It's kind of hard for me to see. So uh, we got you know, it. Um, this is a front cover. It's on nice, heavy 180 gram vinyl. Well, that's the good stuff. Yeah, some nice artwork by Caitlin Madison, and uh, eight songs. 
and uh, and I've got them for sale through my website. So um, that's ajackmusic.com. Um, you can order the record or the CD or or download whatever. You've got uh, you've got a. Uh, you know what? I was going to talk about Bill earlier. You got um bill donovan the great bill donovan on that cd as yeah. well that album look what i found today at the grocery store what it's guinness thing? guinness chocolate um it's like a cake it's oh, a no guinness way. chocolate stout cake and then i noticed it's non-alcoholic but still it's got the flavor so i picked that up for uh for bill oh that's cool who uh, else is on there you got steve steve sarah on there yeah yeah steve's on there um he plays on the whole thing uh johnny keys he's on most of the tracks and a um, couple of guests um, on there. So Kate Russo plays on the last song, um, Brother Judas. And um, my friend Matt Slocum plays keys on the song um, Sweet Forever. Um, nice. Yeah, Matt plays in, with a bunch of cool people. He was in the um, band The Magpie Salute with um, some of the Black Crows guys. And uh, he also plays with um, Railroad Earth, uh, Jimmy Herring, um john mclaughlin like some real you know some real heavy heavy dudes he's a great player and it's awesome to have him play on on the record i was just talking to bob from la cantina about local music and they're big supporters of local music yeah, um you them. they're great um yeah. it's the first time i was there tonight and i was i loved how quaint it was i didn't get a chance to look at the, the outside of the back uh porch area um but i'm looking forward to going back when all this goes away and we can start socializing again but you were a guy that was out three four nights a week yeah yeah so how you been how, how you feeling yeah just kind of you know a little stir crazy i guess you know mm. um but it's nice to slow things down a little bit and work on writing new songs have some family time things like that you know but uh but la cantina is a great spot I, I like it there i um get to play there a few times you know before the the pandemic and everything and that out, outdoor part is awesome. Um, you don't even feel like you're in Franklin anymore sitting out there. It's it's um, yeah. really cool, you know. But yeah, uh, I love the little setup there. Yeah, it's awesome. They got grape grape vines growing and stuff, and uh, it's just a cool cool atmosphere out there. And, and the wine's great. I I I love the ones I've tried so far. Do you have a favorite? Probably the the um, Pinot Noir. Um, Ooh, I like Pinot. I usually grab that one when I go there. Um, I like the dark reds. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I, I usually drink port if I'm going to drink wine. In fact, I've got got a glass here now. Ooh, hopefully cheers! Talk, cheers! Hopefully, I can talk Bob into into making a port sometime. <laughs> um, I got to plug my uh, my laptop in before you play. So just get just read read the message. Oh, you can't read that. Don says hi. Oh, I can Hold see on. it. Yeah. Oh, hey Don. Okay. Hey, miss you too. Awesome. All right, sorry. That's cool. It was in it was in the red, and I don't want to I don't want to um, dump out on you as you play. Um, yeah, what weird. else do we have on here? <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, Bill Bill is watching. Oh, there he is. We, nice. we were gonna do a boozing with Bill, but he was out tonight. But he's yeah. back on, so we'll, we'll get Bill on next week where he uh, makes a drink for us, kicks off the show. I'm yeah. Um, I, I, I was uh, busting his, his balls, and I saw him not doing it last week. I was watching your show, and I was like, "Where the hell is Bill?" I know. Wait, last week I didn't have him. Because, why didn't I have him? Oh, I had uh, Ryan Maloney from Julio's oh, that's Liquors. Right. From, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows a little bit more about uh, alcohol than Bill? Go figure, though. Hey. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I always support local musicians, or I always support musicians. I'll go check out the vinyl. Awesome. Where can people find the vinyl? Where oh, can they fantastic. see see and hear the tracks? Yeah. So the um, the best place is to uh, order through my website. Um, so, you know, that's just going direct, um, you know, so no, no middle person there. Um, and so my website is, uh, my name. So Matt Zajac and then music.com. Yeah. With a C. Yep. With the people who don't know you, Zajac yes. with a C. Yep. yep. Um, all right. Uh, well, what do you want to play? I know we talked about doing something from the album or maybe something yeah. brand new. Yeah, I've got this new one I've been writing. I thought maybe I, I would give that one a shot. Um, it's kind of done, done enough, yeah. you know. So, but uh, this is an so was... this is an exclusive. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah, go go for it. Yeah, I would sit yeah. back a little bit because you're on your phone. You got to get a yeah, laptop. That's why I'm like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Zajac. All right. Zajac, right. ladies and gentlemen very nice very cool yeah, uh you just worked out it just came up with that last night um a couple days ago i started writing it yeah it's been kind of coming together over the last few days are you going to be doing any live shows uh somebody's asking uh, joy is asking are you doing any uh, facebook live music during this whole thing <clears throat> i will be yeah i uh you know was doing that for a little while and then kind of uh took a break and, um, but yeah, I'll be looking to kind of start something up going with that again sometime soon. Good. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just trying to find a good night to do it. You know what I mean? Like trying to figure out like, what's a good, 
a good time when people are going to be seeing it and that kind of thing. Well, at this point in the pandemic, every night's a good night, I think. Yeah, probably, right? Lori loves the uh, the new one. That's a good one. She loves the, uh, the oh, CD awesome. as well. And uh, Raylene giving you some claps. Jeff has ordered the vinyl. All right. Very nice. Cool. Thanks, Jeff. Don's digging it. And Fantastic. even Joy's cat is loving it. <laughs> Swaying to the music. All right. Car Carol checking in. Look, you got oh, a hit. My mom. All right. Oh, that's cool. your mom. Hi. Hi, mom. Yeah. Hi, Matt's mom. Uh, how's the family, Matt? Uh, good. Yeah, everyone's doing good. And, uh, and, and, you know, we've been home a lot for the most part, too, like I was saying. So, um, you know, my wife's still working, but, um, you know, we've had a lot of time to, to hang out and been playing a lot of chess and then just kind of, you know, laying low here, having having some family time and, you know, kind of back to back to basics, you know. Have you taken up a hobby? Because obviously music is not a hobby for you. It's easy to say, oh, I took up guitar. I took up this. You play everything. Have you taken up a hobby? Um. Well, probably the closest thing to that, like I said, I mean, I, I didn't know how to play chess before. So um, so that's a new thing to me. Like I kind of learned around Christmas time. Um, and uh, so we've been doing a lot of that. So I guess that would probably be the closest closest thing to a hobby, you know? Nice. Yeah. Well, we miss you. We miss your live music. I miss hanging out with you. Yeah, I well, miss you too, man. Hopefully yeah. we'll be able to do this again real soon. I hope we'll so get together. Too. All right, nice job on the new song, and the, the album's great. Garden of Heden is the name of the album. And I just went to Matt Zajak. Is it mattzajak.com, right? No, so um, music, mattzajakmusic.com. Music, that's why I couldn't get there. All right, mattzajakmusic.com to get the album and the uh, the CD and to chat with Matt. I mean, you're pretty easy to find. People could just uh, message you on Facebook, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, I'm pretty, pretty easy to, to track down. All right, so you say hi to uh, to Lorian and the whole family, and I sure will. have a great weekend. I'll I'll talk to you soon, buddy. Yeah, hey, thanks for having me on, man. I, I think your show is great. I, I, I you know, I, I like what you're doing. It's cool, man. It's it's something, but thank yeah. you. I appreciate it. All yeah, right, Matt. Man, it's take awesome. care. All right, brother. I'll see you. All right, bye bye. Matt Zajac, love that guy, and uh, can't wait to see him again. All right, let's do this. What's happening? How are Hi. you, Jay? I'm good. How are you? Uh, so I was gonna, I was gonna go with a uh, whiskey because I, I this uh, at the beginning I said I had three glasses. Yes. I had the wine glass, so I had mm -hmm. some delicious wine from La Cantina. Um, I'm on my second beer from 67 Brewing. It was, <laughs> it was so good. The Forge Park was great. It's a uh, an IPA. So I'm gonna do that, but I still have to finish this glass. I figured you would help me fill this a little bit later. Yeah, so sure. This, this is the portion of the show where it's the ish. Ray's happy hour. This is the ish. We've been at this for an hour already. We go a little bit long with Jay. And I like it because you know that Ray's usually about three drinks deep at this point in time. So very easy and laid back to talk to. <laughs> That's why That's I like it. it. <laughs> I turn it to like Matthew McConaughey, you know? It's yeah. just nice and easy. All right, all right. Um, I've been drinking a lot of Greater Good lately, um, finding that they've got just a ton of fantastic product. I think I said this last time, but I can't stop buying it. They just have so much good stuff out there. They really do. Uh, this is where I get my my love of alcohol, by the way. Nana loves her sweet Riesling. <laughs> Riesling. Is it Riesling? Riesling. Hey, you want to say hi to Matt? He's hey, still uh, on the screen. Yeah. Say, say hi to Matt. Hi, Matt. Matt. Say hi to Jay. Oh, hey. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> What's up, man? It's good That's seeing good. you. I was I was telling uh, Ray just the other day that that how much I love your album. It's fantastic. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's great to hear. Thanks. But I need my vinyl. So, yeah, so you got yeah, you got to stop, stop by the shop and we'll set up a little uh, counter display for it too. That would be awesome. Yeah, let's do that. And thanks for uh, for carrying the the record over there. I appreciate that. Of course, of course man. I got a few people. I still got to get the vinyl too. Sarah doesn't even have one yet. <laughs> Yeah, Mike Fitz. I got to get one over to him. I got a few people on that list. Very cool. <laughs> All right, brother. See you, Matt. Cheers. All right. See you, Matt. You do have the Bad Marriage uh, albums, right? The vinyl at the shop? I do, actually. You want to you see them? Uh, I just was wondering if you had them at the shop. 
Um, not yet, no, because Fitzy hasn't stopped by with him. When uh, when I was yeah. supposed to get my, my album, he sent Todd over with it. Uh, so so he sent mine over, but we are going to have albums at the shop for sale for Bad Marriage. But yeah. absolutely gorgeous album. Uh, all this art is done by our, our Chicken Chat uh, partner, uh, Dean Kaluzdian. And look at this. I mean, this artwork is just absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, this is the... This is the emerald green uh, version of it, and I played that a couple times already. Sounds fantastic. Uh, Good. Mike, you know, did a great job with uh, what do you call it, mastering this. So I do okay. have, but I'm, but I'm waiting, Matt's vinyl. Vinyl. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> I got a special, I got a special guest waiting in the wings here. You want to bring okay. him in? Yeah. Oh, it's a distracted driving reunion, ladies and gentlemen. Jay, Jay, what color sounds the best? Honestly, <laughs> I, I haven't listened to all three of them yet, but so I'm going to say emerald green sounds the best so far. I've heard purple, but I only I only spoiled for one. See, there you Jeff, go. Purple. Jeff's got the purple. Um, I was saying we we, we joked earlier because I know that uh, one of Tim's favorite new movies is Fat Man because it I was so awesome. Fat Man. Um, and that was a great interview. Those guys seem awesome. You've been getting some really great uh, people on the show. They just uh, seem to be having a really fun time with it. Uh, I love that's well, funny. Love so I, I Esham, right? I didn't know how to pronounce his name. So I went online and I looked for videos where normally the host would come on. Say, and now I have Esham and so and so on. And I all I found was interviews done just like I did tonight just okay. regular people doing their interviews. And I'm like, Oh, I thought what I was doing was unique. <laughs> it's not, it's they were, not at all. <laughs> they were great though. Yeah. They were, they were fun to talk to. And you know, I'm going to have a bad one, but I, I, I'm not looking forward to that because I am literally only pursuing conversations with people that I really enjoy, you know, whatever work they're putting out there. Yeah, um, but sometimes I, the train wreck's just fun to watch. And it's it could be, yeah. We had a train wreck on distracted driving, and it was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it was right? Nice. <laughs> yeah. What was that? Uh, I don't remember her name, but it was horrible. <laughs> it was it was the girl from, uh, she played in American, American Horror, Horror Story. Story. Yeah. She oh, was yeah. the uh, pinhead. She was a piece of work. <laughs> yeah, she was some. Um, she was, uh, but uh, next week I've got Ron Thomas on, Bobby from the Karate Kid and Cobra Kai. I thought no, that was kind of cool. So he's excited. Minister, he's a minister in real life, right? No, he's a motivational speaker. So almost the it same something thing. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's what he does. He really only made a few movies in the 80s and then came back on Cobra Kai. What I love about his character is that he plays a pivotal role in, in that show. He does. Movies oh, he really, he's there for Johnny. He really changes Johnny's mind about things. And there's a few people that came in and out of that show that really made a, a huge difference that were only on maybe one or two episodes. And um, I loved his character on that. I thought it was great. I, I, the fact that they brought back the whole gang to begin with was pretty cool. They kind of solidify it with that, with season three, when he goes and visits him. Uh, spoiler alert, he goes and visits him. Um, <laughs> but it goes to show that out of all of the, the people there, um, he probably was uh, minus. Um, um, I'm sorry, I always forget all their names. But uh, the, Tom, the I think it was Tommy. Tommy who passed away. That's Bobby. Um, yeah. But he kind of solidified it in this in this aspect where he actually goes to see him because you know otherwise the, the only people he's hanging out with is just the kids. So it's like, do you have any <laughs> friends, Johnny, at all? You know, it's like y your best friend seems to be Miguel and you know just the angry Larusso guy. You know, right. Uh, there, there was a few moments in that show, and we we talked about this, Jay. But and I don't think we didn't talk to Tim about this. Tim, did you enjoy the whole thing like immensely? Yeah, you did. I, know, I, uh, I thought the Alley episode could have went a different way, and I wanted it to go a different way. Like I would love it if she was a full time character on the show again. But I, I, I love I didn't want loved it. Full time character. She, what she did was perfect to move the story along. And I think if you brought in so many people, it would just eventually get like that. That wouldn't happen. Well, that's what changed my mind is eventually when she did what she did. Right. I'm like, now go away. This is amazing. It was necessary. It served the purpose. It was real because you could seriously go to a party and bump into somebody you met years ago. And it was, I don't know. It was so good. Yeah. But I, I just watched it through your guys' eyes. I just kept saying that Ray and Jay are going to love this show. 
Um, yeah, I did. I, I, I told Jay in order of um, fondness for the show, it was season three, one, two for me. Yeah, I, I think I'd be the same way. I, I still, was very surprised. I'm still going with, uh, with well, geez, I don't know. I don't even want to put them in an order because the different things conflict each other. Uh, I, I loved them all. They were, they were just freaking fantastic from beginning to end. From the buildup until all of a sudden you're like, oh, my God, I only have two episodes left. I, I don't want there to be only two episodes. I want there to be a whole other season. So, like I said, hopefully we get another season by the end of this year. I, I hate how we watch TV now. I know. It's, it's wild. I, I don't like binging. I hate binging. Well, that, that show you really couldn't binge because it was week a weekly show. What do you mean? Well, it was on once a week. You had to wait for the next. No, no, no I'm no, sorry. No. You're you're, you're no. right. Mandalorian you're right. did it. Mandalorian did it the right way. They oh. made you wait, and I don't mind That's waiting. What I was thinking of. It gives you something to look forward to. I also love binging. I really do love binging, but I like I like doing both. But like I said, when all of a sudden you get to the, like I think it was three or four weeks ago when when we were discussing this. And we're all saying, are, are we leaving yet? Is the show over? Because we got to go start uh, Cobra Kai. Oh, and yeah. that night, so I woke up the next morning. I'm like, I only have two episodes left. That and then we watched really those two good. episodes in the morning. I'm like, that's it. I'm already done. Right. So that was two weeks ago tonight. We've watched a whole season of the show and it's over. Do you know what I mean? Like th there's a yeah. letdown to that. Like, yeah. Well, we watched because I had seen one and two and then I wanted Molly to see it. And then Jack really wanted to watch it. So we watched one and two within two or three days. And then we got three, and he got involved. So now you got four people in this. Well, we don't have schedules anymore, but trying to watch the show, it took what us two or three nights. Yeah. Huh? What month is it? You don't know what month it is. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but you're, you're right. And, and now we have to wait a year. But did I hear something maybe this summer? Did I hear they're trying to squeeze in more? All I heard was uh, by the end of this year. I heard but by the end of this year, yeah. Right. But who knows? I mean, you know, I guess it just depends on how quickly they can they can uh, get a season out. I Are mean, they all they working made, somewhere else? <laughs> like like anything else, though, they they could have a a, a movie, you know, that that connects season uh, three to season four. I have no but problem. That, with that. that would be smart. Put something yeah. out, even if it's one episode. Now, now it's going to do it with one division. Yeah, yeah actually, well, that's. I think we're doing that tonight. Yeah, that's tonight. We, we are not actually doing that tonight because we're going to be watching a horror movie tonight. Uh, one of the ones I was telling you about, Fangoria put it out. It's porno. That's right. Oh, yeah. I you saw that in the preview for that. It actually oh, looks no. pretty good. Yeah, it looks really good. So we're going to be watching that one tonight, and I think we're going to do one division tomorrow. Or you maybe we'll start, we'll, we'll, we might start an episode tonight after the movie if we get enough time, which I'm sure we will. How long of a period do you give something before you give up on it now? I've, be, I've grown so impatient that they had, they've got seven minutes. Before what, what do you mean? Like if oh, you watching watch, something? Watching something, yeah. Like Barbara gets pissed. I just like we're done and I leave. I get very upset if I put 20 minutes into something, and that's happened recently. I get very like, why did I do this to myself? But you're right. I'm I'm five to ten minutes. Yeah, I'm st I, I've got seven minutes. That's my rule. We watched. I, the, I can't remember what the movie was. It was a uh, uh, Barbie. What was the movie? <laughs> I'm thinking of ending things. Have you seen that? No. Yes, I have, but I can't remember who was in it. Who was in it? It doesn't matter. I saw seven minutes of it, and it made me angry. I watched it. But I wouldn't have turned it off before. Now I've grown so impatient that I'm like, nope, done. How about this? How about you watch so, so many movies that you know the title, but you can't remember the movie? I, came into I know the I saw that. I came into the house yesterday. I yelled up the stairs to my wife saying, uh, what did we watch last night, and did we like it? Like it. <laughs> and did we like it? <laughs> and she said, "I don't remember." See, I've done, I've done that before. That's because I drink, though. Don will be, I'll be like, "Don, what did we watch last night?" And she's like, "We well, watched this." I'm like, did I, "Did I like it?" She's like, "Oh yeah, you said you, it was great at the end." I'm like, "All right, cool. Then that's that." You like everything? Right. No, I do not. I'm think, I'm thinking of ending things. Says, "Oh, Jeff, Jesse uh, Plemons. I like him." It's a horrible movie. What the hell was it about? I don't full, know. Full of misgivings, a young woman travels with her new boyfriend to her parents' secluded farm. Upon arriving, she comes to question every. You know, I don't. I don't even care at this point. It had. It had um, fat, uh, Matt Damon in it. It had Matt fat Matt Damon. Damon. Yeah, the kid that was in Breaking Bad. Yeah, Jesse Plemons. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but they start in this car ride, and it's absolutely. And she just keeps saying over and over. In seven minutes, she must have said, "I'm thinking of ending things." 
four thousand okay. times. I haven't seen that, but I have passed by the trailer. Oh, you know, they push it a lot. Netflix is pushing it hard. But uh, we talked about this the other day. Well, before we get to that, we talked about this the other day, Tim. When you go to Amazon Prime now, and maybe Netflix, I don't know, it'll sh start playing the trailer if you're yep. if you're sitting on it. Yep. And that drives Not me nuts. I don't want to see anything. Nope. Netflix has always done that for me, but but uh, Amazon does not do that for me. And I know there is settings that you can ch you can turn that off because then I have seen other people's Amazons that start playing. I'm like, what the hell's going on? I I've never had this happen on my Amazon, but on my Netflix, it always does. And someone told me if you check your settings, you can change it so that it won't do that. I've looked. I can't find it anywhere. I've Googled it. I, I, my favorite show is working for a show. <laughs> and that's why right there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hey, this book is very popular right now. Mel Gibson's got well, I, that's not good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, dude, like I said, you look just like George Clooney. Did you did watch the George Clooney movie? In that horrible movie that I gave oh, more than horrible minutes. movie. That was such a bad movie. Good Night Sky, but I watched the whole thing because I kept waiting for the payoff at the end, and there was no payoff. It was three movies in one movie that didn't know the other two existed. Like that's the like, best explanation I have of it. I love what you told the two fat men guys about the uh, the, 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 the the NBC commentator. Uh, oh. <laughs> I, I, was, I was so sure that they saw that. I mean, how could you miss that that review? You got to send them the link. Like, oh, I will. Oh, yeah, it's so it, bad. It's so I read it again today because I, I I wanted to talk about it. So that, that is one angry man. I always yeah, like you, when you can actually add new R-rated movies, R-rated um, holiday movies, because I love all the all the family ones and stuff like that in the comedies. But when you can get good R-rated, you know, Christmas movies, Bad Santa, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Harold and Kumar, uh, A Christmas Horror Story, The Night Before, you know, you got Krampus, uh, you got the the classic Black Christmas and three more Black Christmas, and of course, one of the best movies ever. Wow. The Yep. You know, and that's just a handful that that's I have on social media. media. I own. Office Christmas Party. Hmm. That was a good one, one too. too. Loved it. It was great. Because uh, I mean, uh, what's his name? Um uh, Jason Team Bateman. Wolf. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Debbie Debbie does Santa's a good one. That is a good one. <laughs> so you you Jay, you just did horror and comedy, but there yeah. really is no thriller. Fat Man is one of a kind. Yeah, definitely. Well, so far, I mean, you know what, they're probably out there. We just I haven't found them yet because if you notice, oh, we got Justo. If you notice, we actually, you know, when, when you go over to Netflix now, there was probably about 150 Christmas movies that I've never seen before in my life, and I was blown away. 90% of them all look like Lifetime movies. So I was like, okay, I can pass that one. But there was a bunch that I'm like, damn, that's a Raider on movie. I'm going to have to check that out eventually, unless it's gone within like a month. Tim, you're a, uh, you're a life ho uh, Lifetime household. <laughs> Only for one month out of the year. Is is Justin a, a lifetime household? No, no. I don't even know really? what you guys are talking about. Uh, you no, know, we're just talking about lifetime movies in general. No, absolutely. No. no? Okay, garbage. good. I'm yeah, surprised. I I figured Amber would have that stuff on. So that's a no. two ninety nine upgrade on your Amazon account if you want. And so <laughs> do that a month. I did it for the month of December, and I've already started writing my letter to get my refund. Because I want my money back. Oh, yeah. Wow. You know what? We all messed that up. I meant to say Hallmark, and I said Lifetime. Wow. That just well, goes Isn't to... it the same thing? Oh, I, oh. yeah. No, it's Hallmark. You're yeah, right. It's the Hallmark <laughs> Network, isn't it? But still, <laughs> I can't believe we all said it. That's uh, great. How are you? I'm all right, man. How are you guys doing? Good. Are you drinking anything tonight? I am. I'm <laughs> drinking uh, Woo. Woo. Greater Good. Nice. Greater Good, man. I'm telling you. Just such quality product. It's it's probably my favorite out of all the ones I've tried. I keep going back to it because it's just so good. I got it. Where, yeah. where, are, you, where are you finding it right now? Because it, it's out at, at Larry's, so I need to find some more. I actually got it at Marty's yesterday because I went and tried to find the focal banger. Yeah, that, that of course. Well, once they advertised that, I think everyone went there and bought whatever they had in stock because all of a sudden in my feed, I see lots of people being like, hey, check all this out. I'm like, that's what happened. And they just bought everything out that they had. Bastards. Tim's got his own root beer label. Uh, that's, that's actually crystal light. Yeah. <laughs> right. so talk, talk about something that actually was bugging me. 
All right. Okay. So I I watched Tommy Boy the other day. All right. And you know what happens in it? You know, big Tom Callahan dies, and Tommy's gonna go sell all the brake pads to all the different places. And the one thing that really kind of was the the wedge in their side was, you know, the guys wanted a guarantee on their box, and. And Tom was like, and, and, and Big Tom Callahan was like, you don't need a guarantee. Now, why the hell wasn't there a guarantee on his box? What was he hiding? I mean, all it took was this stamp, even if he didn't mean it, just with the freaking guarantee. And then Tommy Boy could have gone and sold all these broke brake pads and nothing would have happened. Why not the guarantee? He was hiding a T-bone steak up his ass. That's that, that was the guarantee. <laughs> you see where you I'm going with this? You can't Why put a guarantee on the box if you're walking around like like you got a T-bone steak in your ass. Big How Tom you... Callahan, man. What the hell was his problem? Put a guarantee Demo on it's no Democracy. problem. Democracy as we know it is crumbling, and this is what you're worried about, Jay? Yes. Yes. I'm it's a flaw hole, Tim. We need to fix it. <laughs> it's one picture, guaranteed. Well, it's like, all right, Jay. Now you yeah. have the opportunity for a prequel. Just put it on the Why box. Why is there no guarantee on the box? Right. Oh, that's, that's the whole premise for the movie before. You're right. That's the, something happened. Or a, a fantastic documentary. Why was there no guarantee on the box? It goes to page one, like it all goes black and white. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that'd be good. It's like a pop I, I feel, video. I feel yeah. like Tommy wouldn't have had such a hard time. He could have yes. bypassed all those issues. Let's but something see. happened. And then he wouldn't have had to do Black Sheep. I mean, come on. <laughs> That's true. He would have made all his money with the guarantee on the box, and he oh. wouldn't have had to slum to Ninja Warrior guy. Oh, Beverly Hills, Hills Ninja. Ninja. Oh, that yeah. movie was awful. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Beverly Hills Ninja. Jay, like, did you like House Guest? <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you uh. this much. I liked it a lot better than uh, Ray did. Uh, it was everything I expected out of it. That's why I actually enjoyed it. I don't think, I don't think Don really liked it, uh, but he sat through the whole thing. It had I, well, I sat through the whole thing too. I, I, I expected $1. shit and I got shit. I refused to pay a dollar ninety nine to watch that crap. I was I glad. Paid. I was glad to see Polly Shore because Polly Shore is great. I was glad to see um, uh, Lou Ferrigno. Lou Ferrigno is great. He played a cop. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say he was great in it. Oh no, I'm saying he was great in it. You, well, you yeah. are, yeah. We expect that from you. How many people are watching this? Lou, uh, four. <laughs> yeah. No, I have 14 people. All right, everyone, sound off. Jay, let these, let these bozos know that people watch my show. I don't know about the ish part of the show, but they were watching before. All right. Um. So, Fat Man, really quick around the room, Justin, you haven't seen Fat Man yet, have you? I refuse to pay for anything. Okay, well, uh, that's <laughs> fine. I, I get that. You can come when over and watch it in my house. In. There you go, Tim. What did what did you think? And I didn't. I was. I wasn't trying to blow smoke up those guys' asses. I know that you you guys love that. Well, that movie. First, I respect the not wanting to pay for anything. I agree with that completely. Batman is the exception to that rule in the 2020 movie program. All like right. that's a great <laughs> review, by the way. Only movie I paid for last year that I felt was worth it, and I would buy it. Like it was. But the best part, my, my, my favorite story of the Fat Man movie is I didn't explain to Barbara what it was about, <laughs> said that we were going to watch a holiday movie, and the cover, <laughs> the cover Santa Claus, it's just, oh, that's Santa Claus, that's a weird going, why, why would you have Mel Gibson be Santa Claus? And then the second that they start shooting me out, I had to pause it and explain that it wasn't the comedy that she thought it was going to be. Oh, Hold that's on. awesome. She's got, she's got something to say here. <laughs> she did a lot of holiday movie. The holiday movie. I bet you she... I bet you she doesn't think Die Hard was a holiday movie either. But the movie was great because you didn't see any flying reindeer. You didn't see a red suit. You didn't see the big bag. All that <laughs> crap was gone. But it was all just understood. They did a great job storytelling wise. That it was just well written. The there was that guy from Vice Principals in it. I didn't know that. Walter Goggins, yeah. Walter yeah, Walter I, love, Goggins. I love him as an actor. So now he's like never even more inclined. That. That's yeah. what you're going with is vice principal. The guy's like, <laughs> well, I mean, let's oh, hold on. How many shows has he been in that he's been really successful in? He the did. Shield. Um, the, the shield is, is the big one. Vice vice principals in that unicorn show. What yeah, else has he that. done? Every movie he's in, he steals. But not a lot of movies. I think it's what uh, Justin's I love, saying. I, I and love, I agree with that. I, that's why I asked that question. Like, how do you get him when he really, he's not doing just anything. He really, He's choosy with what he does. I'm going based off of what I've seen. 
So Vice Principals, like I watched that one because it was like was Kenny Powers, you know. So it's like I watched that movie, and he was awesome in that. And it's like I love when they meet in the the woods next to the school <laughs> <laughs> with like the bicycle in the woods. <laughs> the best part about Fat Man was everyone played it so straight right. that that even I mean there were plenty of times where you could have gotten just a little bit corny and you would have gotten a laugh, but they didn't go that way at all. They just played it completely as of the most serious you know action thriller um that 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 you weren't expecting so see i would have i would have loved to have been in the same room as barbie being like what the hell are we watching because don was ready for it and don loved it she thought it was great um it, it could you're right it could have went cheesy but there were a few cheesy lines and i can't remember if you watch the uh yeah. uh the trailer i think at the end he says something like it's gonna be a silent night tonight or yeah, something like that it, he's playing it straight it's not, yeah yeah no, it's, it worked. It absolutely worked. All in how you act it. And I think the way he acted it was, you know, if, if that's a verb, the way he acted it. Um, I, I always thought up to this point that Mel Gibson was like Dirk. Done, was done. You know, he does all the straight to videos, all that all that. Uh, he hasn't really had a, a winner in a long time. But this could be that could this could be like the John Travolta of pulp fiction. John brings John, John Travolta never did what Mel Gibson did, though. John no, he didn't. I know. John I'm Travolta. trying to get. I'm trying to keep yeah. that out of my head. Yeah, he did look who's talking though, so that's kind of like the same thing. That's sort of, it's just as insulting, right? Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> no, Mel Gibson made some horrible errors, and yeah, at the same, and I, time, I, I don't agree. People that make horrible errors now, so that's the right. thing to do. I don't he agree acted. with anything Mel Gibson did, but as and it's same with Tom Cruise. I think he's a fantastic actor. He's. But a I don't agree. He's a lunatic. Yes. Yeah. You see that he got robots to watch the COVID people? He what? So he he had, this is true, um, he had these roaming, like, um, Roomba-type robots at his yeah. last set. You know, when he took his nutty and he started yelling at everybody for not wearing a mask? Oh, the, yeah. The reason he found out there were no masks was because he had these cameras roaming around watching for people not wearing masks. That's crazy. Like the robot at Stop and Shop? Yeah, oh, I hate that thing. Those are a standard issue in the sci uh, Scientology world. Those little robots. I didn't think of that. Probably got a soul. Oh, robots are wow. That's Stop weird. Stop robots, yeah. A lot of spills in Scientology. That's all I have to say about that. Um, well, it's funny. We were talking about Scientology the other day, and if there is the the highest epsilon of member besides David Miscavige or whatever, however you say his name, it's got to be uh, Tom, right? I mean, oh he's yeah. Got like, he's got to be like this close to, to, to being like the grand poobah of everything because he's like the only still major celebrity that's part of this religion cult uh, that that, that you know cool. that can have an ascending you know ceiling that once you get to it you know everything. Isn't Jason a Scientologist? Oh, I hope is not. he? No, uh. but I, I think I heard Beck was, and that depressed me. Oh, uh, I don't care. They can have him. <laughs> I like that. Ah. Wow. <laughs> Noises. Did, uh, so, Justin, I know your kids are into karate, or at least um, the boy Jeremy. is. Um, yep. What uh, Did they watch Cobra Kai at all? Boy is. He stumbles in every now and again and kind of takes a look at it, but he doesn't really. he hasn't really kind of figured it out. It's funny. He's been taking karate since he's four. And he's still like, you would never know it. But I guess the other day he like blocked a punch or something like that. Somebody who like was like trying to like do something and he blocked it. And he was like amazed with himself. <laughs> so, like, subli so subliminally, yeah. he's like learning how to like defend himself, which is great. Wax yeah, on, you, wax off. When you first learn karate and you're just doing it because it's just, it's basically, you know, like yoga for a while. And then when you actually use it in a situation, you're like, holy crap, that works. <laughs> And he's a person now, so he's like in the black belt classes. So it's like him and like other people his size. And I, I, I swear to God, like Friday night they do like a one hour class. I, it's like it's got to be just like Fight Club. Like they just throw him in there, like like go. Wow, I used to be, do karate in the eighties. It was just like that. I mean, there was contact and everything. I used to get my ass kicked all the time. I was not good at it. Um, I watched Jeremy got his ass kicked like the last belt test. Like it was like combat. Like they had the pads on everything like that. He was not expecting it, and he got hit, 
and the look on his face was like fight or flight, and he kind of just went at it and just went at the other guy. I don't know. If, I don't know if it was so much karate at that point or survival, but he made it through. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so that, that's what always that's what always kept me from doing any kind of martial arts or MMA was the pain. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Getting smacked. Jake Keith says that uh, Billy Sheehan is a Scientologist or it, was. It, well, I guess what we gotta say about Scientology too is let's say you're just First of all, hold on, hold on. What's up, Jake Keith? Sorry, hi, yeah, I said hi to him. Let's say that that you know you're a Scientologist, but you don't do any of the crazy crap. You don't live in one of their crazy you know castles, and you and you just live by the I don't know, whatever. The I mean, crazy code. Well, that's what I'm saying. Do you have to live in one of you know in in their in their weird like battleship uh, to be a member? I mean, or can you actually just live in a house and be like, yeah, I'm part? I have, you know, I, have, I have a comment. Yes. There are other religions that a lot of other people belong to that are doing some really strange shit. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah. I know. Why are we only picking on the people with the spaceship? Which actually, there is space, so maybe there is a spaceship. I mean, what what I what I don't get about it is a a science fiction writer came up with this like within the last 60, 70 years. It was a you know it was based on science fiction. But yeah, I, I, mean, I know that all all religion is based on fiction. Bible. That's that's. I know. The joke, I get it. You know? I get it. The it's joke just, is I, that I, L Ron, the joke is that L. Ron Hubbard and um and who's the guy that that created Star Trek? They decided to. He said, Rod, "I'm going to Roddenberry." Yeah. He's like, "I'm going to make something that's going to rival your Star Trek, and we're going to get everyone to join up for this." That was the joke. I mean, I know it's just a rumor, but you know, if 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 that is out there, then the truth is out oh, there. Yeah. That's not <laughs> Nice timing. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, to each their own. I just, I've heard some, well, I've watched the documentaries and the yeah. Leah Remini thing. And I mean, these people, they try to get out, they get hunted down and their okay. lives get ruined. Well, so, they owe money. That's the thing. Is like, well, that thing too. Is, it's a financial they have thing. Money. The leader Triangle. of the country gets all the money and the all sex, right. all the sex money. Yeah, but you know what? Here's um, the list of celebrities. Dave Koresh. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Dave Koresh. Uh, so, did any of you guys watch the uh, that documentary? Well, the documentary. Yeah, I lived it. <laughs> yeah, I, I was in the news when I was a kid. I I remember the whole thing. There's only, but I mean, man, when you watch that docu series about it, if that's the way it really went down, that's crazy. Uh, there's one scene that I was telling Jay Keith too. I'm like, I need to know if this is real. Where where um where uh, Koresh is sitting there in the actual tower of one of the houses and he is playing i still believe by uh by the the sax man from uh lost boys and <laughs> it's just uh, i mean and i told jay i'm like i have to know if this scene actually happened i need someone needs to fact check <laughs> this and tell me because if that's the case that must have been the coolest thing ever to see right before they kill all these people this, yeah everybody's dead jay they can't tell you <laughs> well they're not saying <laughs> yeah. Had Jay known that they were playing that kind of music in the house, he would have joined. I might have. So is that it seemed like a old. good time. They had a band. Jenna Elfman. <laughs> Jenna <laughs> Elfman, well, okay. Well, she needed was, to tell her soul. Yeah, what's, she do, what, what's she doing now? See, Dave, uh, Dave, that's a disappointment. 70 Donna show. Picciotti. 70 show girl. Oh, wow. <laughs> 70 show theme. Oh, he's, oh in, wow. he's in a lot of trouble right now. He's he's got like three uh, pending rape cases from the yeah. Scientology people. The foreman's in that list. I'm out. <laughs> no, he's not. Um, is that Candace Bart? The voice of Bart Simpson. Oh, oh. No. Juliet Lewis. Oh no. Juliet oh, Lewis. Really? <laughs> Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. I'm, oh, I'm losing girl. people. I, I hate it. Dead. Show me that again. I didn't see it. Everyone froze on me. It's Giovanni, yeah. Giovanni Rubisi. Oh, I like him. Me too. I, I, I you too. Yeah. He was great in My Name is Earl. <laughs> he was. We're binging that as a family. That's one of our family friend. binges. I'm watching Doug, it by myself. Dougie Fresh. I know that it's going to ruin everybody's day. Dougie Fresh. I was wondering where he was. Uh, he's a, he's uh, in the boat with everybody else, according to Jay. Happy birthday to DJ Jazzy Jeff today, oh, by the way. No. no. Yeah, I didn't know that he was. 
It was it was his birthday yesterday, as a Wouldn't matter of fact. Great for him to explain the whole thing as the character from Ant Man, though. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy came down with the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, maybe, maybe that's why yes. they got him. I try. I'm trying this one out. Uh, orbital elevator. Oh, where's Tim, that they're from? talking about beer. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's pretty good. Uh, I got this at Larry's, but I'm trying to. I don't even know who puts it out. Uh, <laughs> Eddie. You know, well, because sometimes any diesel, <laughs> DZ, DZ, Bur whatever. Burlington Beer Company. Okay, it's good. I, I think w I may have had that once. Just once. I'm, I'm sorry. I was trying to connect it to a story, and I just lost track in my head. It's funny. I've been buying more stuff like that, like randomly, just like kind of looking. At it. I was like, oh, that's cool. So I picked up this beer called Melvin the other day. Um, no. Oh my god, Thursday. another Earl. Yeah, yeah, I knew that one. That one's disappointing. A lot of people on the same show together. They talk. I go. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Well, sure. because Tim, it's a pyramid scheme. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not a pyramid scheme. You just tell some people, and then those people tell some more. <laughs> I'll throw it out for you. Uh, I started watching this Night Stalker. Jay, you watching uh, that with Don? Well, we we finished like to watch list. We finished it. It's disturbing. I just watched the first episode tonight. Disturbing. It's I very artsy. I had no idea that what he actually did. Honestly, I only knew a couple of stories here and there. I never dove deep into it. And to be honest with you, the, the most I knew about him was uh, uh, American Horror Story 1984, which was obviously just a farce, but that's who was in American Horror Story uh, 1984, which was an awesome series. But man, oh, is, Richard is Ramirez. The night, so the Night Stalker yeah. is the one that did that. Is he the What's one that, that hog ties? He hog ties the husband and puts like a plate on his head, so he knows if he moves mm -hmm. or something like that. I didn't no. get that far. No, I mean, yeah. he, he, he just he went around murdering, raping, and, and that's all he did: oh, robbing, murdering, raping everybody. Did yeah. anybody watch Mine Hunter? I watched Mine Hunter. Yeah, Richard Jewell. The end. The no, no, Jewel. that's Mine Manhunt. Oh, oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Mine Hunter, Hunter yes. yeah. I watched the Mine Hunter on this guy. It is so sad how it ends. It, like it just ends, and they're not going to make another season. So it's so sad. There's a lot That's of what movies. I fear with all these great movies, like Utop I mean, TV shows like Utopia. That they, they could just let it go away. I don't know why they don't have something in the can just in case. I always said from now on, if you're doing any one of these streaming kind of shows, you should have you make it in your claw that if you get canceled, because anything can get, can get canceled, but you have a, a a one episode out that yep. you can at least wrap yes. things up. I think everyone should put that in their claws. Well, that I'm sorry show got canceled, and that was awesome. Oh, was so good. Like, so good. That was so, and like we watched all of them, and then it was like, then it got canceled. It's like, well, no, you're not done yet. Like this yeah, show is just, has just, more just, stories. Yeah, she got canceled at the beginning of the pandemic, and she was really mad. Like, do you see her Twitter videos? They were yeah. so sad. She's almost crying. She's like, we were going to do this, and uh, my husband's character was going to do that, and we were going to explore him masturbating, and I caught him, and it was going to be a whole thing. I, I like her. I'm shocked that awesome. we have a, uh, a second season of Tiger King. And I know that he's in jail, but just with everything that they didn't they didn't put out there, I'm surprised that they didn't try and put some hackneyed thing together, being like, okay, we got a season two of Tiger King. Well, and really he's been making a murderer. There's no, that's the same thing. It was. You know, I, don't, I, was I, don't, I was really expecting a lot more from that second season, and it was a big letdown. I'm just saying, to your point, they can make a second season of Tiger King. Yeah. If they can you can, you can of, make it happen. Yeah. I'm sure. But I, don't think, I, I, I think it's too late. I don't think anybody cares because we got the Mandalorian. Yeah, we got the Cobra Kai. We, got, we have so many other things. That was the first one that came out as the pandemic hit. So it was well, like, let's binge this. We have nothing else to do. But I think it's it, like months after the last episode, people totally lost interest in that. I don't know if a second one would be as big. Although, I, I take that back. I think if you did it a year later and you promoted it as the first big Ben show is back, yeah. maybe that would work. Well, I think everyone would at least check out the first episode to see if it would be binge-worthy. No matter what, yeah. everyone that saw it the first time around would watch it again. In fact, that would probably renew everyone to go watch the first season again. They're making a movie. I want right? to know more about the supporting think, cast, like the person yeah. that got their arm eaten. I want to more, oh, know more about Jesus. them. Yeah, that well, was, they did, that they was did a, uh, they did a, a second like they did an interview with them. I forget which show it was. 
it was Joel a, McHale a did it. They, yeah. Joel McHale did it. Yeah. I think they've done more than that. that. Like, they've what done are you like doing now? episodes on different things. I like the history of swear words. That was oh, good. Oh God. Well, where did all that hair come from on the top of his head? Holy crap. <laughs> I haven't seen that one chair since 1982. And he was in Valley Girl, man. And sold so the brown. And got his hair back, yeah. I said that the other day. I said that was the, the best thing I had ever seen him in. <laughs> was that... And I, I like it. I do like most of his movies, but that was sure. the best thing I've ever seen Nicolas Cage in before. I his wanted, acting was superb. I want more swear swear words though. They'll there's, they'll have another one. I watch I watch the F bomb with Jack. Yeah, I know <laughs> Jack, Jack told me numerous he, times. <laughs> he just turned thirteen. He asked if he can watch it. The only thing I was worried about was the M M F like like that that stuff. Um, it like was weird. Yeah, it yeah. Wait, what does that different mean? I don't know because then I think well I, maybe it was anything that had to do with sex, you know, w when you yeah. use that word in in relation to sex. That's what I was more worried about. Tell us um, more, Doctor Ray. The F, huh? Tell us more, Doctor Ray. The F bomb itself, and I know Tim, you're um, yes. you're a big supporter of this, of teaching your children how oh, okay. to swear correctly. Correctly, be aware. Yeah. And I think that's why I showed that to him because it, that show had scholars in in it. It did that, right? So linguists just sit there casually. Yeah, linguists, oh, yeah. Kind of linguists. They were no. cunning. No, so they don't do that. No. That's a different don't episode. Do nope, nope. So it was very interesting to sit down <laughs> with my thirteen-year-old and watch that. And it, it took a lot. It took a lot of thought. I think we watched Bitch maybe, and it was like, ah, oh, okay, and then. He's like, I want to watch the F-bomb one. I love how they talk about how shit's not, it's not even a swear word anymore. We don't care. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's like yeah. basic cable swear. Did they, they didn't hit asshole? They didn't hit the asshole? No. <laughs> they, weren't, they weren't tapping that asshole. <laughs> that's surprising. Uh, I, want, I want a whole bunch of British that's people talking about the keyword. So I heard, uh, I, I watched that Kara Cedric show. Which is absolutely horrible. I think she's a great actress. Oh, call your mother or whatever. It is. Oh, she does not to be need to be do, doing uh, sitcoms. Anyway, she called somebody a dick, and it brought me back to that show where they said you can say dick on TV now, but you can't but it, say that your dick is being a dick. <laughs> but somebody tried. Because, they'll, they'll bleep the first one, but not the second. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Dick's dick <laughs> is one bleep. Yes. Yeah. yeah, my dick is being a dick. Some I forgot who it was, but they tried pulling that off and. Didn't you're work. not allowed to say it to somebody else. You're not uh, if, you're, if it refers to your organ. Yeah, it's a no go. You, you can say "dick" coming out of my mouth. <laughs> yes. I always like to check in. Who's watching now? Who's watching now? We have ten people watching now. Wow! So roll call. Chime in on the comment <laughs> section if you're still watching. Well, I know that it's. Let's be honest. We got it's Don. It's Matt Zajac. Uh, Pat Oswald is watching. Woohoo! I love Patton Oswalt. He I also, in the past 10 years, he's in everything and he's always good. His wife found like the Golden State Killer. I watched that documentary. That was really good. I gotta watch his, that. One. His new wife? No, his, no his, first, wife, his first wife that passed away. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. She was, uh, yeah, she was writing a book about it when she passed away. Friday! Friday. Hey, I sent a message to uh, Rob, and I'm just like, TGIF, and he just laughed. <laughs> Rob. Yeah, Rob. And just just because it's Friday, I'm like, you know, just joking around. I'm like, it's TGIF. It's like you wouldn't even know if today's Tuesday or not. <laughs> you know? All right, I'm on a very tight schedule. I have to go watch TV with my wife. All right, yeah, Tim. This, yeah. the, ish, the ish part of this show went a little long. Sorry. It was my no, fault. It's it was okay. Ray oh, oh, no. yeah. well, Justin showed up. Raylene's still Sorry. here. No, that's for calling me Santa, you son of a bitch. <laughs> um, Tim? I'm, surpri I'm surprised Who? she's still here. Who? Rusty? Ray Raylene's here. <laughs> is is Raylene still in the Navy? Maybe their no, time is in different Canada. in Canada. <laughs> hey? what, what year is it in Canada? It's May here. Raylene is one of our legendary listeners for uh, the New England Legends podcast. You guys do that every week. And so is jo so is Joy. Joy's still here too. You have. Ray, is there anything new going on with the legends, Ray? 
No, it's all old. It's oh, all sorry. old legends. It's, <laughs> <laughs> by definition, new is not, you know, a legend. So no, I don't know. Not, nothing's new. We just we every week we put out a thing. We've discussed this a million times. Are you guys gonna put out a vinyl record with the best of? Yeah, I think that'd be a lot of fun. We're we're still tossing that around. I know you can really help with that. I can literally put it out for you. All right. That's what Let's do it. <laughs> uh, so, okay. So uh, around the uh, clock here, around the clock, around the board here, starting with Jay. Jay, what are you doing once we get off the air? I think we're going to go watch <laughs> porno. You're going to watch a porno. That's awesome. Yeah. Tim, what are you guys doing? I'm going to go to Jay's house, look in the windows, and watch him watch porno. Woo! Yeah. Justin, what are you doing? Not that. <laughs> uh, um, my, I don't know. My, what I'm doing. my son is chomping at the bit to start watching SmackDown, so we'll probably watch some WWE. No, no, and... no, it's okay. it's okay. And Ray, what are you going to do? <laughs> Jay, I don't know. I think we're watching uh, WandaVision. Nice. Oh, that came out oh, today? It did. Two episodes. Two episodes. Oh, they only dropped two? two. Yep. And again, so I think Disney's going to continue to do it that way. And I think that's the best way to do it. We get to look forward to something each week. It will I'd help you know what day it is. It will help. It'll help. Well, it'll help further the week along. Right. I, that means every, another day. every Thursday, I, I'd be like, I'd be like, Don Bailey, guess what? Tomorrow night, she's like, New Mandalorian. I'm like, damn straight, New Mandalorian. Hey, I got to be honest with you. you. Need a musical guest. Dan lives upstairs. He can be a musical guest sometime. All right. Yeah. Maybe next has, week. Has Dan been? Dan, there you he been is. Hi, Dan. You got new stuff? I don't. What was the question, Jay? I said, Dan, do you got any new stuff? Have you been working on stuff? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, actually, I'm working with Fitzy at Bad Marriage on Tuesday to record a new single. Kick ass. Woo! Nice. That, that's Dan. <laughs> and he what stands like a sidewalk. What? I said, that's Dan, and he stands what? like a sidewalk. It's it's a it's a quote from a song. <laughs> Ray, are you just admiring your good light? I like the light. I got it. I had a camera and it shit the bed on me. I know. I've been watching the whole show. Uh, Why were you getting horrible. a new camera? Your camera is fine. No, it's the light that helps. I don't know. I, I just I wanted an external camera. Oh, but, well, Tim, I got this 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 circle light because of you, and I think it looks fantastic now. Jeff, the question, the answer is absolutely nothing. Like just no. oh, Jeff, chime in earlier. I'll get you on, but we're almost done. Oh, Jeff, we, we should start over. Or we should start having a beer show sometime. That'd be kind of cool. That was, what, June? I, thought you guys yeah. were I just wasn't watching it. You guys don't have a beer show? Not yet. Can't no. come up with a name. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That was the sticking point. We need a name. That's what kept us from doing it. You guys were at my house. You all came up with, like, five names. We were yeah, drunk. Cousin Rob is uh, watching. Hi, Cousin Rob. Happy okay. belated birthday, Cousin Rob. Why does he have does. a circle what light? What are you doing? Aliens. Oh. I'm going to have a dance party after this. You know what you guys need? You guys need that, that green screen that attaches to your chair. <laughs> oh, Yes. I saw that at Staples the other day. I was horrified. Uh, well, okay, so I, I told this story. Um, you talked about it. You sent it to us. All I did was look at it, and I commented on your post. And the next day, I started getting ads for green screens. Yeah, it's not going to work. Once this is done, can we just hang up? Yeah. That's not green. Uh. <laughs> Why do you have a curtain in the middle of your room? That's so can you turn it into an actual office space that people need to do online stuff. Yeah, now what are you gonna do? Um, but I can still see everything else. I've seen right, the, the Brady Bunch. Isn't this how they made their own room where they had to separate the room? <laughs> yeah, that's what Marsha. Hey, hey everybody, it's me, Terry. <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> so you're, you're, on the you're on the Merv Griffin show. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's just do that puppetry. Again. That was awesome. <laughs> now I want you to do puppetry. I love oh. <laughs> oh, come back to the curtain and do the golf swing, please. Remember, I originally oh, yeah. 
I originally wanted to do puppetry in the back seat of the car. Uh, so the yeah, we know. And I'd be doing puppetry. What? Um, you know, the what? green screen is supposed to be so that you could project an image behind you. Right. Yeah. No, this is the curtain. The virtual thing. Yeah. No, this is literally just a curtain in case we need we to know. use something so there's no background behind you. Gotcha. All right, Joy, I'm so sorry. I know we're entertaining you right now, but I think we have to go. <laughs> Just say, by the way, speaking of new local music, Justin and I are recording a song tomorrow. Talk to me. What do you got? You'll just have to wait and see. Okay. It's it's something we, we already had, but Love it's going to be, a, gonna be a little more shiny. This song was fantastic. Oh, thank you. What's that? That's Justin. No, that's not me. That's Tim. That's Tim. Look at his face. You go through the curtain. That's the Tonight Show theme song. Oh, <laughs> Hi Barbie. Hey Barbie. Hi Barbie. Hey Barbie. Can you make me some cookies? <laughs> All right. Is I gotta. I really have to go. Hold on. It's it's time to go. Is this gonna use it up all your? Time. Yeah, all See, my Ray, minutes are gone for the month. Right. That's that's why I always liked having that that there's there's a way that you can say goodbye. That's why I started doing that on Chicken Chat where it's like.